Heart disease is the number one killer worldwide. But what if I told you that 80% of cases are preventable with a heart healthy trick, which I want to reveal in that video. You can slash your heart attack risk down to nearly zero. Sounds crazy? Well, here's how. I will tell you exactly how. Covered by science, I will leave all the sources down below. Let's deep dive into it. We will cover key risk markers, which almost no one is talking about, and evidence-based habits and tricks, how to cut down that risk, which now it's really getting very popular in the sophisticated cardiologist scene. So we need to talk about that. And there is one powerful metric at the end most people are overlooking. So stick around, especially if you've been told, told you have bad genetics or something. Well, our final tip might completely neutralize that genetic risk as well. Let's get into it. First of all, we need to talk about the science. We need to talk about the facts, right? Your risk markers. There are some risk markers which many people are not talking about. What really drives heart disease as per the, per the numbers, as per the science, right? It's more than just this LDL cholesterol everyone is talking about. This is in fact not really the villain. Doctors now focus on advanced markers like apolipoprotein B, ApoB, the total number of bad cholesterol particles, ApoB is a better, much better risk indicator than LDL cholesterol by itself. Another key player is lipoprotein in little a or LP little a, an inherited form of LDL with a nasty twist. About one in five people have high LPA. That's 20% and if I remember correctly, I'm one of them, right? Which can double or triple your risk actually and that sounds a little bit depressing it's genetic right if your lpa is high, high i'm not telling you to test it you can test it but if it's high you know it's genetic it's most of the time not really your fault right and lp little a is ldl's very bad twin fueling plaque buildup and inflammation because with high lpa the plaque buildup is just more likely right so inflammation of course is a very very big other major factor it's your silent enemy, especially the chronic inflammation. Lowering that already led to 15% fewer heart attacks in one trial, right? So the key takeaway is know your numbers beyond LDL, know ApoB, LPA, and of course, reduce your inflammation as much as possible, which we are talking about on this channel here very, very often, right? Of course, the usual suspects like blood pressure, blood sugar, and so on are very important. I made many videos on this channel. Make sure you watch it where we are covering how to improve these metrics as well. So together, these are painting actually your real risk picture. But there's one thing left, one thing which many people are missing out on. And I want to talk about the proven ways how to slash your heart attack risk down to not zero, but very close to it, right? Knowing your risk is step one. We talked about that, right? You can do blood tests and so on. It's one metric no one talks about. Well, now here's how to drive these risks down before I'm talking about this crazy, very important factor which almost no one is talking about literally only the most sophisticated of the cardiologists are really talking about that as the most important risk factor and this is what i want to come to towards the end first of all the obvious ones if you're smoking quit smoking you can cut down your heart attack risk by nearly 50 percent with that already come on quit smoking now do it seriously like that is that is the very important part so now let's get into a few other ones before i reveal the most important one but by the way if you have troubles to quit smoking i made a video how to actually beat any single addiction it's popping up on top of the screen right now make sure you watch it so then eat smart cut out processed carbohydrates and sugar load up on vegetables fruits protein healthy protein grass fat grass finished pasteurized beef fatty fish even fatty meat if you are choosing the right one pasteurized grass fat grass finished heavy in omega-3 and any other healthy fats from the Mediterranean diet olive oil is beautiful if it's extra virgin cold pressed i made a video how to identify the correct and good extra virgin olive oil is popping up on top of the screen right now so in one trial actually a mediterranean or clinical mediterranean diet slashed the heart attacks and strokes by 30 percent alone by the diet change then quit smoking you already reduced it by a lot right but this is not yet it however less refined 
carbohydrates mean less belly fat and inflammation. And there was one key word. I'm not talking about inflammation. I'm talking about belly fat. Wait a second. I'm getting there. Stay active is very important. Be in active pace of the fittest people had 80% lower risk of death than the least fit, of course. So make sport regular. Some cardio zone to hit regular muscle workouts. Very important, ladies and gentlemen. Brisk walking, cycling, whatever you like, right? Zone to hit. I said it. Prioritize sleep. Also very important important short sleep less than six hours is linked to 30 percent higher heart disease risk right aim for seven to nine hours of quality sleep and bring down inflammation with healthy habits which calm inflammation sauna ice bath sleeping properly reducing stress and so on and so on but now listen to this ladies and gentlemen this is what i was waiting for your waistline the hip to waist ratio is the secret weapon behind reducing your heart attack risk to almost zero, especially the genetic one. Listen here until the very end. Ladies and gentlemen, this is really crazy. Let me make my hair in order to be ready for this reveal. Finally, this is the ultimate heart protective metric. Your waist to hip ratio. So the belly size versus your hip size for men and for women, because that is a proxy for visceral fat around around your waist, it releases inflammatory signals and wreaks havoc on your body. A 2025 study found waist to hip ratio. It's a very new study. I'm going to show you a few nice, interesting um, statistics here from that study. Massively affects LPA risk. It doesn't increase or reduce LPA, but if you have high LPA, a uh, Proper, a better risk, a hip to waist ratio reduces the risk significantly. And hear me out. High LPA had no impact if waist to hip ratio was low. In people with large waists, it doubled the heart attack risk. Here you can see a chart and you can see the upper line. That is people with high LPA and a bad waist to rib ratio. So a big belly, that is the highest risk. Then the line below that, you can see that is people with a low LPA, or this is a high LPA, and a low waist to rib ratio, so a lower waist to rib fat, less belly fat, it's already significantly lower. And you can see there is two lines very close to each other, right? Whereas the people with high LPA and bad hip to waist ratio compared to the people with low LPA and bad or big belly fat have a double as high risk if you reduce the belly fat and improve the waist to rib hip ratio ratio, you can see right here that these lines suddenly are very close to each other. And that, ladies and gentlemen, shows a proper good waist to hip ratio eliminates the distance of risk associated with people completely irrelevant in this case then whether the LP little a is high or not reducing extra belly fat amplifies this effect like crazy so what is the translation shrink your waist shrink your risk lose the belly fat through diet exercise and remove a huge fuel source for heart disease risk in fact I made a video about the perfect diet to slash down this fat next to sleep exercise and so on one video just about the diet it's popping up on top of the screen right now you need to watch it even if you have high lpa or bad genes keeping your waistline trim right which i'm trying to do <laughs> <laughs> can neutralize much of that risk, ladies and gentlemen. The bottom line is heart disease isn't inevitable. There is some genetics to it, yes. There is a lot of lifestyle to it and you can impact your numbers by a lot. So let me know what you think about that. Dear ladies and gentlemen, smash up the like button, subscribe to the channel right here and watch this video about the optimal diet to reduce visceral fat. And as always, guys, as always, bye, bye.